Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 19 playthrough with the Phillies. Uh, we're actually at episode 34, so we're moving right along. It's a lot of episodes, though, never to have made the uh, World Series, so I'm hoping that at least by episode 50, you know, we've got a chance at making the World Series. I'm not so sure, because we are definitely in the middle of rebuilding this team right now. Uh, so it's probably not going to be episode 34 or 35 um, that gets us to the World Series, but hey, we're still we're still trying. Um, we have just finished the draft and pretty much signed all that I'm going to sign out of that draft. I'll show you here how that turned out. Uh, we are 72 games into the season, so exactly 90 left, and we are exactly 500 right now 36 and 36 which would um satisfy our owner goals for this season he's basically given us a, a pretty long tail now or long uh, goal to reach the world series up to, uh, he's given us to 2039 uh, but he retooled the team this is the owner's son the owner died last year and he's really cut our budget back considerably and is uh, expecting us to have a balance like of thirteen and a half million by 2037, which would be uh, we're in the 2036 season, so we've only got a season to meet that, and uh, that's going to be tough to do. And it's kind of leaving me at a at a tough spot, and that's probably what the bulk of this episode is going to be about: is how do you rebuild when a you don't have a whole lot of budget to rebuild with, and that's you know, that's understandable. That's usually the case. You have to rebuild through uh, the draft, through through your miners, your farm system. But then on the flip side of that is how do you rebuild when your farm system is really pretty shot? And for me, I'm hesitant to uh, some of the guys that I've got signed, some of the better players that I have signed long term or at least for the next few years, I'm hesitant to trade those guys away even though they're, they're probably going to be my best trade value on the team like guys like Mott second Lowman at third uh, I hesitate to trade them away because I realize I don't have anybody in the minors who are, who are going to replace those guys and within you know say a year or two or three years down the road and I don't know if I'm going to get the kind of trades that I need when I send those guys shop those guys out there and if I don't then I'm going to be in real big trouble because I'm going to be giving away guys that I could build a team around and uh, not going to get that kind of value in return. Uh, but what I'm going to do this episode, we'll, we'll go over the draft and I'll look at maybe some trading strategies um, because I am really uh, open at this point to doing Close to a fire cell, I've said before, I don't really like that in this game because I, for that reason, I think when you're usually in the position where you have to make a fire cell, it's tough to get that value back unless uh, unless you've got a good farm system already and we don't. But we'll look at some options for that and look at some of the strategies that I use when I'm, when I'm trading away uh, some of my superstars and hoping to rebuild a team. And uh, maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we'll find a couple of good trade options out there and uh, we can move ahead but let's look at the draft first off it wasn't wasn't one of my best drafts and a lot of that had to do with uh, where I drafted and also just um, the players that were available it wasn't uh, not a lot of good players available by the time I drafted <clears throat> so my first pick was an outfielder then a field uh, potential four and a half star center fielder from my scout and potential three star from OSA but uh, he's got great speed a good defender if his contact and gap power if those hit where their uh, potential is uh, he could be a really good leadoff type player and my scout even has him hitting for pretty high power uh, good speed so I, I like I like his overall ratings and I was able to sign him I think uh, I signed him for $850,000, not too bad on the signing bonus. My next pick was a potential three-star pitcher, uh, a bullpen guy now, but it has the potential to be a starter. Um, not rated as highly overall with OSA, but his individual ratings were pretty good with them too. 
and uh, just didn't see a whole lot out there. By the time I got to draft again in that second round, he was the 52nd pick overall. So um, I picked him up for $300,000 signing bonus. I, I felt like that was okay. And my third pick, uh, another pitcher, uh, went with my gut on this one, his individual ratings. And OSA, he was rated higher than what my scout says he's going to do, but uh, pretty good individual ratings potential-wise. 13 stuff, 13 movement, 11 control. That was from OSA. Um, I thought he might turn into maybe a, a pretty decent bullpen, if not a starter down the road. And I've already signed him. But my fourth pick was <clears throat> a shortstop. And this guy can play a lot of positions, uh, has good infield range, a good personality uh, rating. He was a potential three-star from my scout with double digits and in, in all the individual ratings. And uh, similar to that in OSA, although they didn't think his power was going to be all that great. Uh, but he was wanting a very high... Um, bonus and he was the fourth pick and I negotiated with him as much as I could and uh, I think my last he wanted 1.6 million I forget what my last option or offer was but it, it wasn't enough and he broke off negotiations so I'm not going to get him and then this Dan Moltari is a uh, pick that I took fairly late like 18th or so uh, a guy that I would typically like to go for good speed Good defense, can play several positions in the outfield. But he's wanting $2.2 million, and uh, I'm not going to give him that at the 18th round, so I'm pretty sure I'll lose him. So that means that uh, of those top five picks, I'll go back to the draft history. And of the top five, I was only able to sign four. Uh, I got, in that fifth pick, I got uh, another pitcher as a closer, who this guy has some really good upside, very strong stuff and movement potential ratings. His control's not too bad. Uh, he's got great personality ratings. Uh, his OSA, he's o overall like a three star potential from OSA, two star from my scout, but uh, his individual ratings are still pretty good. So I was able to pick him and get him for a hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus. And I think, just looking at the McGrone, he was a, a pretty decent pick, too. And my sixth pick, I um, was able to sign him. He's going to be a reliever for now. And O'Connell, catcher, At that, after that sixth pick, it started getting really sketchy. So not a great draft. Um, hopefully some of these guys will develop. I mean, I'm trying to still rely on my scout, OSA, their potential ratings and also um, I re rely on those personality ratings a lot you know someone with a good work ethic good leadership class skills uh, spark plug if I see that uh, personality type I'm usually going to go for those guys when I can if, if their individual ratings are pretty good even though their star ratings might not be that good and just hope that they develop that's happened a few times in the past that's happened but I'm looking here at my overall uh, minor league farm system, and, and if I were to just look at, well, how we rate um, overall, like using the OSA ratings or rankings, uh, we're 24th out of 30th, and that's mainly because of Norman, who's the catcher I drafted a few years ago, uh, a couple years ago, I guess now, and uh, Betancourt, who is... Uh, a starter who's probably not going to develop, I don't think, into that great of a player. He's at Lakewood, which is low A right now. He's uh, fragile. You know, he's, he's injury prone already in, into his career. And uh, I don't like his stamina. I don't like his movement. Uh, I think the best I can hope for from this guy is he might develop into a, a reliever, uh, middle relief or long relief in the majors. But I don't think he's going to be a top prospect for me but uh, Norman even though for the most part I'm not in dire need of a catcher right now I do think Norman has the potential to be um, a really solid offensive player in say a couple years 
I just don't think he's a guy I'm going to be able to build a team around. Um, but if he develops like the way OSA expects him to develop, which is double digits in all the major categories, even power, then yeah, he could probably be a, a cornerstone of your offense, although it's tough with the catcher making them the cornerstone of your offense because uh, they're, they're going to get rested more than your other potential position players on the team. But he's the best thing I have in the minors, and uh, there's nobody in AAA that's really ready to go right now uh, and be a, a star for me. Um, go back to my scouts ratings. Uh, got some three-star, two-and-a-half-star potential guys down in low A. Uh, Ken Dion is a guy who I'm still – hoping that he develops. He's He looked really great in low A this year. I called him up to high A, uh, so he's in the Florida State League right now. I'm hoping that he finishes out the year there, and then he'll be ready to go either to double A or potentially triple A to start next year. Uh, this guy has, what is that, five solid pitches, uh, high ratings in several of them, and his individual ratings, stuff, movement, and control, uh, potentially pretty high in stuff. And uh, movement and control look good, too. So this guy could turn into a really good starter. Uh, Mike Scout thinks he's going to be a potential four or five starter, but he might even top out a little bit higher than that. Um, got a couple of relievers here. Josh Glover, who is uh, somebody who just uh, was added to the team when I went to fill out the roster, so he's kind of like a minor league free agent. Um, and then a double A, I've got Bobby Kirtley, uh, a guy who's developing pretty nicely. I think he could potentially, I don't think he's going to be a closer, but I think he could be a good uh, relief, middle relief type prospect. And uh, there's Norman offensively. Aguirre here at the right field, he's got some pretty good individual ratings. He might turn into a good player too. He's looked really good the last what is that, three seasons since I drafted him. I drafted him in the fifth round in 2033. He's looked good at every minor league stop that he's been in, and uh, he's doing good in double-A this year on pace for 20-plus home runs, 283 average, uh, high walk total, so his on-base percentage is going to be good. Um, I like this guy's potential as maybe a bench bat, uh, but definitely going to keep an eye on him. But you can see there, there are no real stars coming in Outside of Norman, there are no real stars coming up uh, through my minor league system. Uh, here's a three and a half, four and a half star potential in Benefield uh, that I drafted this year. Going to have to see how he develops, though. I mean, coming out of the draft uh, with that high of a rating, he's probably going to take a little bit of a um, a dive as he gets more play time. But I just I hesitate to do the fire sale because of this, because um, unless I can work out some really good trades where it's, um, say, J.J. Lohman or Ma for a few prospects, I'm really going to be I'm really gonna be in trouble. And those are two of the guys that I would be looking to trade right off the bat. I wouldn't rule out trading Via as well because um, – He's not a free agent after this year, but he's fragile. He's been injured already for me uh, since I've picked him up. He's He's been injured quite a bit. He's missed, uh, what is that, 20 games this year, close to 20 games already this year. Uh, but Loman and Ma, uh, I think it's time to consider those two. And let me do one thing before I start looking at that because I've got an injury to deal with in uh, Arturo Lugo. Um, guy I picked up in the off season. I picked him up um, in the Rule Five draft from the Cubs. He has um, shown some pretty good stuff. He's on potential, in potential to hit uh, over 200 strikeouts. Um, I'm curious to see though what kind of injury I'm dealing with with him. So I'm going to play out until I get the uh, until I'm able to find out what that injury is. Let 
and we won uh, seven to five in Milwaukee. Cochran a good game. He's been kind of up and down this year. Villa injured again, and Vargas a, a good game. He's he's off the pace that he started out on, but he's having a pretty good game. Uh, Madrak picked up his seventh win. Mendoza, uh, who I moved into the closer role, he got the, his fifth save. But still no word on the injury there to Lugo. Let me see. All right, so game two against Milwaukee. We win 6-2, and Lugo, it was a big injury. I was afraid of that. So he's going to be out for two to three months. Um, not quite the rest of the season, so we're in June. So uh, probably mid to late September before he gets back. So take a look at how we won the game, though. Uh, Maga game, Cochran, and single... Uh, Espinal uh, started, who I, I put him in that starting rotation, and he picked up uh, his first win as a starter this year. So good job from him. And so now I'm going to take a look at the waiver wire just for the heck of it. Nothing really out there right now. So I have a couple of options uh, that I've already kind of looked at here in uh, the minors. I've got... Cabrera or Kroll or Crow, however you say that. Um, I think Crow has probably pitched a little bit better um, than Cabrera. So at this point, I'm going to uh, bring up Crow and let him take over the spot for. Uh, Yeah, I'll put him in that four spot. Uh, that was for Lugo. And I've got, finally, um, Rob LaRue is just a few days from coming off the DL, but um, he's going to have to have, you know, he missed since, I think it was September when he got injured, so he missed a lot of time there. So I'm going to have to give him a pretty long rehab assignment so he won't be ready to go right away. So let me go ahead and finish out this series, and then we'll start looking at some trade options. So we lost two to five, but we did win. Uh, what was that? We won two of three. Yeah, we won two of three from Milwaukee. And last game, let's see. Lowman was uh, injured, but just a minimal injury. Hartling pitched a good game, eight innings, 11 Ks, just two runs, but Mendoza blew it in, in the bullpen. And let me see, finish out this day. Still no word on that Via injury. So now it is four months. Uh, so I, he's gone for the rest of the year now. And really, as good a player as this guy is, um, it was a bust. You know, he was an all star last year. He um, definitely has the potential, and I got him really cheap. <clears throat> but at this point, um, his injury proneness is too much of a of a red flag, and he's just not uh, he's not going to get the play time that he needs. So I'm not going to out and out release him, but I'm I'm pretty much giving up on him. I don't expect him to be a part of this team going forward. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to bring Katula up from the minors. Uh, he's played in the majors before, so I think he'll give you good play off the bench. And take a look at, uh, we're about to play the Mets on the road. And the Mets are uh, 40 and 33, having a pretty decent year so far. And we're, we're a game over 500 now. But I'm going to take a look at the waiver wire. Uh, closer out there, Krebs. Hmm. He's been around for a while. Uh, having a pretty decent uh, year there. For Baltimore but um, I'm really needing probably some outfield help at this point um, looking at the team stats I haven't looked at those in a while you can see our offense is really just doing a great job first and second in a lot of categories um, 
10th in home runs, ninth in extra base hits. So power is pretty much the only thing we're lacking. And then the pitching, uh, bullpen ERA isn't too bad. It's that starter's ERA, though. It's really, really been tough. And defensive efficiency, we're, we're not doing great. I think uh, we struggle having, um, you know, just, just looking at uh, Koopman, for instance, having him as the starting shortstop. His infield ratings are not that great, but he's not rated too solidly at, at shortstop. Uh, so that's hurting us. And then pitching in general, it's been um, mainly that pitching staff, the starting starting staff, really um, really not too good. And I'm going to take a look at the pitching stats. Um, I moved Furlong out of the starting rotation. Uh, for the moment, I think I'm going to leave him out of there. He's been doing okay as a reliever. Uh, Hartling eh, wasn't too bad of a pickup. Madrak hasn't been too great. Um, if I could get something for him, I'd be willing to trade him, but we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Montalvo has looked pretty decent at times. Padgett has not looked good. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on with him. Um, 754 ERA, though. Uh, ben Wright's looked pretty good. Um Mendoza has looked good, and Hannibal, I mean, that starting rotation, you know, has, has really been rocked. Um, Experian starting to pitch a little bit better. His ERA is down to 562, uh, which is quite a bit lower than what it was. Um, but I really do need pitching help. And on the offensive side, Cochran hasn't been... I don't think too bad. Um, I still think there's some upside with him. Um, OSA doesn't like him as highly, but he's just 23, about to turn 24. That contact rating is hard to beat. Uh, Koopman has looked good offensively, 343. I think he was, uh, last I checked, he was leading the National League in batting average, so that's good. Dusty Stern has looked really good off the bench, and I think he's going to get some play time now with... Uh, even though he's just a one-star player, I think the way he's playing, I'm, I'm going to give him some play time now that Villa's injured uh, with Catula. Probably do a little bit of a platoon situation there. <clears throat> but I'm going to go ahead and shop Loman and Ma around and see what kind of thing we get, kind of offers that we're getting just one-on-one. -on -one. I expect... Ma will probably be the better value, or, or he'll be uh, <clears throat> get more interest. And right away, I'm seeing just doing, you know, shopping around. Um, I'm looking at players who are, are about, you know, the same uh, boat in terms of contract. I'm not going to sign, uh, trade the guy away to pick up a starter, three-star starter with a $10-plus million a year contract, now $15 million. <clears throat> Andy Larrabee. Uh, Randy Mayhew. Pretty good, but he's uh, he's going to be an actual free agent at the end of this year. Zion Spearman, he's going to be a free agent. And Jerry Clark, nah, he's fragile. <clears throat> Greg Gibson, bullpen emergency starter. He's got some uh, time left, so <clears throat> excuse me. I wouldn't have to worry about uh, picking him up right away. But I don't think he's. I don't think he's what I need. Josh Zard, no, control is pretty bad. And here, here's Dave Corbin, um, who is, uh, yeah, he's decent. He's had some pretty decent years there with Detroit, and he's signed through 2039, but it's pretty high on the back end. Closer Mike Shirtliff, who's a, uh, Signed for a couple more years and a pretty good uh, deal right there, six million. But um, 
Don't like his personality ratings. Mike Maltz, pretty good looking shortstop. Signed to a uh, long term contract, looks like. Juan Flores, uh, he's fragile though. Uh, Mike Peterson, no wrecked. As you can see, not uh, not a whole lot is being offered. Uh, just one on one. Fredo Ramos. This guy looks pretty good. It's just I don't like his stamina. All right, so nothing there. So let's go ahead and. Uh, Let's see what I would get if I sent Ma out there. And my guess is it's probably going to be pretty close. But Jerry Clark comes up again. Uh, he's a borderline starter. I mean, he only has three... Three pitches with only two of them really rated high. Uh, Aiden Penfield mm, doesn't look too bad. Um, three star starter. I don't think I want to trade Ma for him, though. I'd rather keep Ma. Yeah, just uh, Luis Mariscal, not good. Now here's Luis Godinez. Um, don't like his personality ratings. Sean Barge, who's a, he was signed for, wow, four years there for Detroit. Peter Terpstra. Terrible work ethic. Uh, Josh Gordon from Los Angeles. He's a good player here. He's uh, signed a pretty big contract, though. I don't think I would gain anything doing that. Ted Wildbacher, who's an, uh, an ex-Philly. Uh, he's been a starter for Milwaukee the last few years. Bobby Holmes, who uh, pretty good closer, but free agent after this year. So maybe just a little bit better for Ma, not uh, not a lot. And then the last guy I wanted to shop around was Madrak. I mean, these are my three biggest contracts at the moment. And it's looking pretty much like it's going to be the same. Um, Josh Sard, bullpen. Dave Corbin. Uh, just doesn't have the work ethic there. So I'm not seeing anything that would really give me, let's say, uh, a long term. I mean, Mayhew is going to be a free agent after this year, so um, I don't see that's going to be. I mean, the only thing that'll do is save me some money this year for the rest of the year. Um, Kadir Canada. He's outspoken. Might be trouble in the bull when that uh, in the dugout. 
Here's a potential two and a half star starter, but uh, he's looking good in the minors. But man, his uh, control is not rated too highly. Joe Cheshire. This guy has some pretty good overall personality ratings. But I don't think he's going to develop too good. It's a long contract. Man, just not much uh, being offered right here for these guys. Dave O'Brien, uh, his stamina is just too low for me to consider him as a starter, though. Kadir DeMond. This guy's had a pretty good career in this uh, playthrough. He's up to 134 wins. Damani Sinkfield, a uh, pretty decent pitcher. He signed uh, a vesting option. Which he may not, he may not get that. All right, so nothing doing, just uh, sh shopping these guys around. So let me look at, I'm gonna look at the trading. Uh, let's see who's on the trading block. If anything really stands out, there's Lockfeld. Uh, still looking pretty decent. Actually, he's uh, not having a terrible year there. And Relief for Oakland. Uh, Randy Mayhew, who uh, saw his name come up a few times there. So nothing major. Uh, a lot of relievers. Nothing really It's going to give me <clears throat> what I need in terms of uh, long-term, two, three years or, or greater you know, help. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at team, well, that's my team needs. So let's see who's wanting to win now. we got the Braves. Um, you know, they've got a pretty good third baseman, two good options there at second. Uh, don't think they'll, they'll need that. I mean, I think they would probably go for um, Madrak. For instance, but let me see if there's anything here that would help me out. Um, I wonder if they would trade Leclerc, who I like his defensive ratings, I like his individual ratings. Um, could be a good leadoff hitter. Let's see. So let's see if Leclerc form a drac. See what they would think about that one. It's offers an insult. Uh, they would want me to add Mendoza, who's um, just not ready to add him. I think he's he's got some years left, so I don't want to do that. Let's see if I put in Loman or Ma. Let's see. So I'm not going to go for that one, and I don't have a feeling that he'll go for more. Mm, same deal. They really want Mendoza, and uh, I don't know. I don't think that's going to really, pitching is where we're, we're struggling. Let me see what they have, either in AAA, uh, they have pretty good looking center fielder there, uh, great Speed and defense. Uh, this guy looks like he's got a good shot at uh, making it. Let me see. That's right. I wonder if they would do Madrak for this guy. 
and he has played a little bit in the majors, not much. Let me see if they would go with Madrak. Nope. Um, would Ma or Loman do that? No. So they're not interested in any of those guys. So let's move on. So Braves win now. The Cubs win now. Uh, let me see what they are. See what kind of active roster they have out there. So they're looking pretty good in their starting rotation. Um, have a decent second baseman uh, really not doing too great at third let me see if I put Loman out there if they would go for let's see if that would be enough to get a guy like Teslo for instance and they're saying no so let me see um, Let me see if uh, Madrak uh, would go for Tesla. Remove. Um, don't want to see anything there for them, so let me move to another team here. Uh, Houston, Detroit, they're wanting to win now. Um, Detroit. Pretty good starting rotation there. I don't know if they would need Madrak. Uh, third base, they have Wally Kuhn. They have Sean Barge at second, but he's uh, he's injured for a few weeks. Not really seeing anything on the on their. So this is Triple A. Pretty decent looking first base prospect there who really probably should be playing in the majors. But that's about it. I don't see anything better than than, uh, than what I have in terms of their minors. So nothing there. So now Detroit, Houston win now. They need they could use some, some starters. So let's see if they would be interested in Madrak. Um, they got Vlad, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, I mean, they've got a few outfielders there, but uh, this team's really struggling. Uh, a pretty weird mix. Let me see what they got. Triple A. Got decent. Uh, Starting pitcher prospect. And that's about it there. Let me see a double A. Man, not, not seeing much there, double A either. Uh, let's see if they've got anything at, uh, let's say, high A. Really good. Pitching prospect, but uh, he's not really going to be, I don't think, a starter. So let's move on. Uh, I'll do a couple more of these teams. Kansas City, they're wanting to win now. Let's see what they've got at their major league roster first. Um, they're looking pretty good. In their starting rotation, Madrak could probably help them out a little bit. Um, third base, they're pretty set. They don't really, they're not set too much at, uh, at 
third. I don't know if they would consider Loman four. Um, let's see if they've got a good pitching prospect. Don't really see anything that's uh, don't really see anything from them. So moving on, uh, look at the Twins. Uh, first off, see what their active roster looks like. They've got a pretty decent starting rotation. Ron Frazier looks like a pretty solid second baseman. Third, um, Aguilera is really struggling. I could probably trade Loman, uh, but I let me see what I could get for him. Josh Carpenter, don't like his uh, individual ratings. Let's see what double A looks like. Good looking closer prospect here. And high A. Nothing there. So we got uh, the Yankees and Washington. We'll look at these and then I'll, I'll probably move on here. So Washington, Nationals. They could use a starter or two, looks like. Um, they've got Mike Pelton short. Third, they, uh, they could be struggling a little bit there. Let me see if um, Lowman might give me a pitching prospect on this team. I don't think, I don't see anything in there. Unless you go Bobby Eath. And I don't like his control. I think that's going to be an issue. And this is the Yankees. I'm sorry. Not the, the, not the Nationals. So don't see anything at Triple A, Double A. Good looking uh, reliever there. And the high A, Whew, nothing doing. So one more Washington Nationals, and I'm going to look at the uh, active roster first. So they could, they could probably use a starting pitcher. Their starting rotation is looking pretty old um, for the most part. Second, they're struggling a little bit. No, no, they're not. Juan Ramirez is looking pretty good. Third baseman, they could use a guy like uh, Loman. Okay, so let's take a look at Triple A. Nothing there. Double A. 
Nothing there. Really looking for a solid starting pitcher and uh, not see anything but this Chris Pickin. No, not that great. So, I mean, I could throw Loman out there and see if they would go. Um, Zach Lanier, he looks pretty good. Nah. They're not interested in trading him. So, I got a lot of work to do. I'm not sure what direction I need to take, but definitely need to make some moves on the team, and it's not going to happen too easily, that's for sure. So, um, we got another month until the trading deadline. I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead and play around with what we have available. So the, the three guys that I'm looking to, to get rid of would be uh, Madrak, who is a free agent at the end of this year, but that would save me some salary. Um, and Lohman, who's signed for three more years, at uh, almost $19 million. And Ma, who's signed for at least one more year at 14 and a half. It's going to be an option year for him. Um, those are the guys who I'd be interested in, in getting rid of and uh, see if I can work a deal out, but um, it's not looking too good so far. But uh, we'll keep playing around with it. Uh, as always, though, thanks for watching. Uh, trying to get back on schedule here. Uh, I'll take a look at uh, alternating between this playthrough and the Reds until, as I said before, until we make it to the World Series um, and win it. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode.